Hello, today we're going to have a look at uh, side chains in Cubase and there are two different solutions to this problem. So basically, very briefly, side chaining is about using one source, one audio source, to have some kind of effect on another. Now, I was just jamming away with um, a guitar line a little bit earlier and I wanted to put some compression on it. And then it kind of got me thinking that this is a perfect opportunity because it's such a simple, I was literally just laid a really simple guitar line down and then I was just jamming over the top of it. So I've got basically nothing in the project. We've got this really simple guitar line and a drum line. Now what I'm gonna do is firstly create a group track. You can see these two guitar lines are, they were basically like just two versions of the same chord arpeggio being played. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a group track to join those two things together. And both of the examples that I'm going to show you today use group tracks. So this is a kind of a nice convenient way to do it. So here in my mixer, I've got my two um, audio tracks selected. I'm going to say add group channel to selected channels. It's going to be a stereo track and I'm going to call it guitar sub. And that's that done. So now this group track is just a combination of those two guitars. And here it is. So I've got individual control over this thing. Now I'm going to add a compressor to it. And the first example that I'm going to use is a FabFilter C2. And the reason I've chosen this one is because this demonstrates um, Cubase's inline side chaining. If the VST, I think it's only VST3 instruments that have this capacity, it has to be coded by the plugin manufacturers, but you sometimes get this little button at the top that says activate or deactivate side chaining. I'm going to turn that on. So now this compressor is capable of taking a side chain input. And if you bear with me for like two minutes, you'll actually see it in action. It's really, really simple stuff. First things first, at the moment, the compressor is behaving like a compressor. You can see it compressing the audio channel. I'm going to put a nice healthy amount of compression on. So that's standard classical compressor mode. We've not done any side chaining yet. Now what we're going to do is find the kick output from the drums. So we've got various different outputs from our drum kit and this here is our kick. And what we need to do is in the sends section of the channel strip, we're going to send to the compressor's side chain. See this side chain here? By default, the send is inactive. We're going to make it active by turning it on. So this is now sending its full signal, set it, set it to 0 dB, into the compressor. We're still not going to see any effect. We're not getting any um, side chaining compression at the moment. So this is still the regular audio signal. And now each plugin is going to be slightly different, but if you turn it to external, The compressor is taking its feed, its instructions on how much to compress the guitar sound by from the kick. Every time the kick hits, the compressor is activating fully. You know, the kick is basically saying, do your job as much as you possibly can. And it pulls the volume of the guitars right down and you hear it kind of disappear. And you can see on this little red progress line, the process is just magnificent for this stuff because you see what it's doing. It's pulling the volume of the guitar down with every kick hit. So these sharp spikes are the kicks. make it more of a musical effect by having a bit of a play with the attack level. So it's not quite so brutal when it's coming in. Make the release a bit longer. There we go. 
now we've got an interesting musical effect. Now, I'm not really all about talking about sidechaining as a concept today. I'm talking about implementing it in Cubase, but this is simple mode. When the plugin gives you the ability to take a side a sidechain feed directly from another instrument, then this is the easiest way to do it. Now then, this is where things get tricky. What happens if we use a compressor that doesn't have the sidechain feature available to it. So here we have the Native Instruments VC160, very highly regarded compressor, it's very lovely, and it's also got sidechain capabilities, but it's not being implemented with the sidechain feature that Cubase needs. Well, we can do it, but we have to take a different route. The first thing we need to do is delete the uh, group track, because instead of creating a stereo group track, we're going to create a special kind of group track. We're going to create a quadro group track. Call it the same. And now we'll route our two guitar tracks to it. So here they are, guitar one and two route them both to my sub and so far we've achieved the similar kind of effect with both guitars going to the the bus the group bus so i'm going to bring the compressor back in now we wanted to play with the vc160 and here it is you can see it compressing the signal. Make it work a little bit harder. There we go. Now what happens when I turn the side chain on? The compressor shuts down. There's no signal feeding into this plugin's sidechain. It doesn't see any audio data. So the primary route into most plugins is the, the audio path, the, the standard signal path. When that guitar information is flowing into the group track, the guitar subgroup track, the plugin hears it and can do some work. Sidechain is a secondary input, but in order for it to do anything, it needs some data to be fed into that track and ordinarily we accomplish it with the sidechain feature, but it's not there. So what we do instead is we've now created this, um, this dual stereo track called a quadro group track. And this is where things get a little bit fiddly because we need to go into audio connections. And this is the only way to access this feature, unfortunately. Right click on guitar sub and we need to add a child bus you see this stereo LSRS. I actually don't know what this, the S, I presume it's sidechain, but I honestly don't know. Anyway, pick that. Now this subtrack is enabled. The second set of stereo um, feeds into this group track is now enabled. And the sidechain that we've engaged is taking its feed from that secondary set of inputs. One final step we need to execute because we've just created a new group track here. So our kicks strip needs to be told where to send its data to. And now in our available sends, we can see stereo LR. Pick that, turn it on. doing exactly the same job as we were able to accomplish in a, a, a simpler way with the Pro C. Now what you'll see quite a lot is um, a second child bus, the standard stereo feed. I've not found any need to have to do that explicitly. You get that for free when you create a quadro track and everything works. It works perfectly happily as a regular kind of stereo track, even though there's this extra pair 
um, of inputs sat there waiting, idle and waiting to be used. So you can use a Quadro track completely normally without having to create this um, stereo child bus as you saw me do. But if you want to go to that extra length, obviously you've now got completely independent inputs and you can feed separate data into both of those if you want. So now that's available um, as a destination just in the same way that the original one was. But I don't bother with that because it's, it's superfluous for my needs. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please hit the like button. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you want to check out my Patreon or YouTube channel membership schemes, that would be great. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.